Hi everyone, I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue. Welcome to my channel. I'm excited to share with you in this video my double bubble method of shipping fragile items and you will save money on the, um, the weight of the box. You will save money on the shipping cost with this technique and I'm excited about it. I've tested it out on several items. I'm going to show you how to pack and ship something and how I double bubble. So let's get started. First, I'm going to show you several items that I've shipped using my double bubble method. This all started a few months ago when I was preparing to ship this Indiana Glass Fairy Tea Light. And I was trying to double box it and I went over the weight. And so I tried double bubble. You'll see what it is in just a few minutes here. And it worked. After that, I shipped this um, Royal Hager Vase double bubble. And then I shipped this Pyrex dish with my double bubble technique and then this owl planter. And since it has worked fine for four times, I decided to put this video out there and show you how to pack and ship using my double bubble method. Now, first of all, I'm going to show you how I pack this particular uh, owl planter. And it's pretty simple. The first thing that I do is make sure that I fill any area that is a void. What By a void, I mean any area that is hollow. And so I'm going to use maybe a variety of tissue paper. Oh, by the way, I use a padded dish mat to work off of when I'm packing fragiles. So I put some tissue paper in, add some layers of bubble wrap. Sometimes I cut the bubble wrap in smaller pieces. Whatever it takes and whatever is the lightest weight, but making sure that the hollow area of what I'm shipping is filled up inside each. Trust me, it, this is a good thing to do. And then I take, uh, for the customer's sake, I just like to take a piece of tissue paper and nicely wrap, or at least wrap, the uh, fragile items so I'm protecting the finish. And I'm just using some household tape here to uh, tape the tissue paper on. So after that, it's time to bubble wrap. I recommend half-inch large bubble wrap. I do not use small bubble wrap for fragile items. If I do, it would be a first wrap and then I would add uh, half inch bubble or large bubble. So I'm just probably using three sheets here and I use Scotch shipping heavy duty tape. So I'm just going to, and I'll, here's my little tip. I use a paper clip to keep the tape from sticking to itself. So just tape that large bubble wrap, you know, as you would any package that you're preparing to ship. And on the ends, you can see there, I just tuck it in and I leave these little corners or wings extended on my item and I consider those to be nice protectors when I put it in the box for the corners. It fills up the corners. But then I go a step further. I want to make sure that it doesn't have any hard edges. I actually feel the edges to make sure that I don't have anything that feels exposed or feels hard. So take some more large bubble wrap, maybe just a half of a piece of bubble or whatever it takes and wrap that with some tape, attach it with some tape to make sure that you have covered your fragile item. And you check it again that there's no hard edges and everything is protected. And of course I keep those corners sticking out, those little wings, which will be helpful when I put it in the box and give it some protection on each corner. I'm just going to go ahead and use a USPS priority mailbox. Do not use flat rate. This method cannot be used with flat rate boxes, so make sure it's a regular priority and this box is approximately 7 by 7 by 6 and it's going to work fine for this. So assemble the box and get it prepared for putting your fragile item in it. And I just like to add tape basically both directions. I just think that makes it more secure and I flip it over and fold the flaps back and let's see if this uh, little uh, owl planter is going to fit. I believe it will. Trying to snug those corners down in there. If you had to, I guess you could pop a bubble or two as long as it doesn't take anything away from the protection. I jiggle it to make sure. Now, of course, I add a little thank you label. These are just labels I run 30 up on my printer to say thank you from Avante Avenue. And then I always tuck in the packing slip as well. So I think it looks pretty good. If I needed to, I could put another layer of bubble wrap on top, but it feels pretty good. Of course, I'm still going to double bubble this. So what does that mean? Keep on watching and I'll show you my technique for double bubble. 
Again, I'm going to take about three sheets of half inch bubble wrap that will work fine for this size of box. And I'm going to actually wrap the box. That's what I mean by double bubble. I'm actually going to wrap the box and protect the box itself. I'm doing this in place of double boxing. As you can imagine, bubble wrap is a lot lighter than a second box would be. Of course, my bubble wrap's not covering my ends of the box, but that's okay. I cut some half inch pieces of bubble wrap, and of course the bubble wrap is 12 by 12 square. That's the type that I use. That's what, how it mostly comes, 12 inch perforation. And I'm just going to tuck in the half sheet of bubble to into the end, just tucking it inside the other, the first layer of bubble wrap. And I'll just tape that down and, you know, have some tape handy because you might use several pieces of tape to do this process. But again, tape is fairly light and fairly cheap compared to double boxing. I don't want any wings on this layer. I want to make sure everything is tucked in and taped tight. So I'm folding the ends in completely. And I will repeat that process on the other end. Again, adding the half sheet of bubble wrap and, you know, basically wrapping it like a present, but wrapping it with half inch large bubble wrap. Again, taping everything down. Okay, so all my hard edges of my box are covered with the large bubble. There's one more step to this process, and that is we need to wrap the package one more time, and I'm using a large Tyvek or a poly mailer, whatever you want to call it. And because it's not large enough to fit my box into, I'm just cutting it open along the sides and making a large sheet of poly mailer. I have tried a plastic garbage bag. I did not like that. It was too thin. So I have actually uh, ordered some very large poly mailers. I have more on order than what you see here. So center up your package in the middle of the poly mailer and check it to see for fit. Now I'm finding out quickly here that it's not going to cover everything. I do not want that bubble wrap exposed. So I'm just going to get my scissors, just like I'm wrapping a Christmas present, and I'm going to cheat a little bit and cut a strip off of one end of the poly mailer. And I'm going to use that to fit into that space that needs a little filler. So you just kind of cut that to length and tape it on Again, it doesn't have to be fancy, it doesn't have to be pretty, but we do need to wrap that bubble wrap so that it's not exposed along the way at the USPS, along the many conveyor belts and things that it may encounter. This poly mailer will protect the bubble wrap. Again, much lighter than double boxing. So I'm checking the fit one more time here. And do know that once you get that tape out and in your hand, once that hits the poly mailer, it will stick and you will not be able to get it off very easily. So take your time, check your fit on both ends, make sure it's going to wrap okay for you before you put that first piece of tape on. And once you say, okay, it's good to go, this is where you start taping. So just tape it however you need to, to fill in that gap and basically just wrap it up. You will use a lot of tape, as I said. Now that I have the seam tape shut, I'm going to go ahead and fold in the ends just like I would wrapping a package. Then it, again, it doesn't have to be pretty. It does not have to be fancy. This is about just doing the best you can to protect that box. And, you know, basically you're protecting all the hard edges of the box from, you know, any hard, from drops, from processing, from handling. You're giving that entire package an extra cushion with this double bubble method. So tape it up real good so there's no edges that might get caught on anything during the processing. So there you go. It's wrapped on all sides and I give it a thumbs up. I hope you'll give it a thumbs up when you try it. And of course, I add my fragile sticker as I do for my packages. So everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you will try this double bubble method of packing and shipping. I invite you to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to receive notifications on future videos. And really, truly, leave some comments below. Maybe you have to go try this first and come back and leave a comment. But it most certainly has worked for me, and I'm certain it will work for you too. So, everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Vicki with Avante Avenue. I'll see you soon.